So, first of all, what does FTQ stand for? OK, um, so FTQ is um, Food and Drink Qualifications, and um, we have a specialist place in the food and drink industry. Uh, we have been serving the industry uh, with qualifications for the past 21 years, and more recently we have been involved in endpoint assessments for apprenticeships, so uh, providing uh, services to uh, apprentices, their employers, and uh, support and training providers with food and drink industry standards. What What is your job role and what does it consist of? Yeah, so I'm uh, Chief Executive uh, of FDQ. Uh, I've been doing this job for uh, four years and um, I'm also uh, the responsible officer for the organisation and as an award and organisation we are regulated uh, across England, Wales and Northern Ireland and as a responsible officer my job is to ensure that um, the quality assurance of our qualifications are, uh, are making sure that they are valid and uh, robust and that they've been delivered correctly by the training organisations that are uh, approved to offer our qualifications and we do that through a quality assurance process uh, and again my job is to make sure that, that those compliance and controls are there to uh, so that when uh, certificates are issued and they are uh, awarded to uh, our clients that they have been earned and delivered in the right way and uh, that's a, a very important aspect of running an awarding organisation. Yeah. As the endpoint assessment organisation, my job is to ensure that equally that the uh, the endpoint assessments being delivered independently and to the correct standards and that those apprentices have again uh, in proven their, uh, their knowledge and skills through a, through a, an examination type process. And I guess overall my job is to make sure that uh, those things are all done correctly. But on top of that, as chief executive, I'm in charge of ultimately uh, financial stability, financial health, in charge of um, HR, uh, ultimately making sure that um, our people are well treated and also in charge of operations, making sure that uh, we have a business development strategy and uh, that we are uh, delivering to our customers in the best way. So, yeah. so that's a, a bit of a in, in, in a nutshell that's really what, I, what, what, much what I'm responsible for and what I do. Pretty much the big boss then. <laughs> yeah very much. What do you enjoy about your job? Well I, I enjoy the um, there's always a buzz uh, in, in, in the job because there's always so much happening really. Um, 12 months a year we are um, on the under different pressures and my job is to uh, is to make sure that we manage those pressures so there's always something happening never a dull moment um, there's always uh, that balance to strike between income and uh, efficiencies and obviously uh, making sure that we're delivering a good service to to all our providers so that's what um, I really I really enjoy about about the role yeah. Sorry. Did you do an apprenticeship yourself at all? Or? Um, well, I guess in s not in so many terms. Uh, I guess um, I didn't go to university route. Um, I went, um, I left school at 17 and uh, pursued uh, the working sort of uh, role from there. Um, so I guess uh, over the years I've served all sorts of apprenticeships in that I've I've learned from work and from that experience of work and I've taken on qualifications as I've gone along but um, certainly the vocational route's been the route that uh, I've taken so I guess in that perspective yeah I've uh, I've certainly um, done the, the work served route which is almost where apprenticeships are. Yeah if you could go back now would you would you do one? Knowing what you know now, I, I don't think I'd change a thing. Actually, um, I've got two 
Uh, I've got two children. Uh, one has taken the academic route and one's taken the apprenticeship route and they're both doing really well in their early 20s. You know, um, so I can see the advantages of uh, of the academic route and I can see the advantage of the vocational route as well. Uh, and uh, I think equally, um, it's I think it's more about attitude and um, and drive to um, to to be as good as what you can be. Uh, yeah, whatever thing you're doing. So, so I'm a I'm a believer in in both options. What's the right option for different types of learning, really? Yeah. What? Well, how did you get to where you are today? Like, what previous job roles have you had? Well, I've been in the education sector for about 25 years. So, um, uh, particularly on the further education sector. So, I've been in frontline delivery. Um, very much operational roles um, and um, within the further education sector there is always something going on you know there's always a apprenticeship type programs there's youth training schemes you know you go right back uh, YTS there'll always be training schemes out there for uh, to encourage young people into work um, so I, I learned that at a really early stage that uh, if, if you're in that sort of marketplace, uh, you'll always be employed because the government will always have initiatives to that end. So I've worked for a, a range of organisations that have that have uh, worked on the front line, be it at colleges, be it at sector skills councils, be it at uh, trade bodies that deal, that support training providers. And I think the final sort of uh, destination award and organisations who, who work equally with government, work equally with regulators and clearly work with uh, FE institutions on the front line. So I think um, it's a good sector to be in. As I said, you'll never be out of work. Uh, yeah. It'll always be, uh, you know, employable. So let's talk about the the pandemic. How, how, yeah. did, that, how did that affect you guys at FDQ? Well, I guess um, we are sort of, as I said right at the start, we our client base is really the food and drink industry, and the food and drink industry, you know, as you know, has been yeah. um, churning out food all yeah. the way through the pandemic. Uh, hasn't been easy, uh, but they've always had key worker status in order to get food on the shelves of shops and supermarkets, etc., or butchers in the high street, bakers in the high street, you know. The food industry has been absolutely um, uh, on top form throughout the pandemic and our responsibility as a food and drink body has been to support that. So we haven't really stopped to be honest, we've been equally uh, busy um, supporting the industry in the training of their staff in, in certain respects. So um, we've been um, hard at it through the pandemic um, hasn't been easy we've had to overcome lots of uh, challenges uh, you know lockdowns are difficult um, but you know we've uh, we some of our workers also assumed key worker status during that stage that stage in order for us to continue to be able to deliver endpoint assessments for example um, if the apprentice is working then we have an obligation to serve the apprentice and that's what we did by and large throughout the pandemic Obviously, from a financial perspective, it's had a bit of a, a topsy turvy sort of year because yeah. during lockdowns, our business was not as busy as we were during peak periods. So, um, so apart from the usual sort of like, you know, um, peaks and troughs uh, in terms of business, we've uh, we've been we've continued quite well and proven to be quite resilient throughout the whole period. So. I'm very pleased with the way we've actually uh, adapted to it all. Do you think there'll be any more challenges because of COVID going forward? I think there'll be there'll be uh, challenges, yes, uh, but I think that um, there will be a we will have to acclimatise to the uh, to the environment that we're now going to have to live within, you know. And that will be uh, more based upon 
our ability to um, live with this uh, with this virus and obviously the vaccination program has helped support all of that. So I don't think we're at, I think there will be a you know a few more months yet before we uh, acclimatize to it all, but we're getting there uh, through the autumn and certainly into the winter. But I'm hoping that there'll be more return to normality, uh, you know, over the next sort of six, nine months. We'll start to see that. Yeah, I had my second vaccine on Monday and on Tuesday I couldn't move. It really knocked mm. me. Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that's been uh, an after effect as, as for many actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, so yeah, but I'm glad you've had it and uh, that you are as well. <laughs> yeah, I am. I'd rather be ill for one day than weeks. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, final question. What profession other than your own would you like to attempt if you could? Oh, that's a good question. Um, <laughs> uh, I'd love to have been a professional cricketer <laughs> or a sports administrator or something like that would have been nice. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm very interested in sport and administration of sport. Obviously, that's why. I'm quite uh, proficient, uh, but uh, yeah, that would be a that would be a sort of working in the sporting sector, in an administration role would have been would have been good. But uh, uh, but so uh, now I'm happy enough with the job I'm doing there. It's really really good. Yeah. Are you into cricket then? What? Yeah, yeah. Always have, always have played cricket, watch cricket. You know. Uh, so uh, yeah, that's my yeah, that's my main out of work hobby. Yeah. Do you think we have much chance in the T20 World Cup? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I think we're, we're paper. We're the best in the world, so um, got to go into that as favourites, really. Uh, <laughs> fantastic talent. So, uh, yeah, uh, very hopeful. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not a massive fan, but I'll probably watch that. I watched a bit of the hundred when that were on. Yeah, that was good, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah it was good. I was. I wasn't 100 percent sure about that, but uh, I was uh, persuaded. Uh, yeah, uh, it's a it's a good a good initiative, and uh, and I think worth one that they'll probably continue with. Yeah, it'll be good. Well, that that about wraps. Thank it you. Up. Thanks, Tom.